Let's ask about her death. Let's get that out of the way now before a couple weeks goes by and then it's awkward to ask because you've already known her for a while. Let's just get that out of the way. Alright. Shizune intrigues me and I kind of want to ask something about her. Oh, did we just open a romance dialogue? <laughs> oh. She intrigues me. <laughs> But I can't really ask about something that personal, can I? It'd be really awkward <laughs> to date somebody who was deaf with the their interpreter along with the date when you like don't know any sign. Yeah. Hmm. I can't come up with anything else to ask, so I just focus on my food while the girls talk between themselves. Misha and Shizune sign back and forth very animatedly throwing sideways glances at me, but Misha refrains from translating. Maybe they're talking about secret girl stuff or something. I quickly notice a conversation in sign is not enough to fill a silence. Wait, so we didn't even get, do the thing we clicked on. <laughs> we should have asked about the library. <laughs> Uh, I guess. I guess we still made the wrong choice. It, yeah. it was such a wrong choice that didn't even let us do it. <laughs> it just shut us down before we could even start. We arrive in the classroom early, but we're not the first. <gasps> oh, hey! Oh. She may have had a, a run-in with some hot substance. Maybe. That dark-haired girl I noticed before is slumped over her desk at the last row. Oh my god, is she okay? Oh my god, we startled her. She jumps a little when Misha crashes into the room with the elegance of a rhino. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's, a, that's a great metaphor. She shrinks deeper into her seat. I can feel her tension all the way from here, as if she were slowly turning into stone just from our presence. She's cute. She is. I love the bangs. Misha and Shizune either don't notice or don't mind it, as they walk directly past her to their seats and begin to converse. I'm left wondering about her, even when the classroom slowly fills with other students and finally the teacher. <laughs> Getting into the rhythm of school feels strange. It's as if my brain remembers how this is done, but my body doesn't. I'm pretty sure she stubbed her toe in that cutscene. I feel very bad for her. That's what it looked like. <laughs> Towards the end of the class, I start yawning and counting the minutes left. I shouldn't be this tired on my first day of school. Maybe it's the long time spent in the hospital that made me like this. I'm even feeling physically weak and lifeless. Before long, the final bell rings. School is finally over for the day. Beside me, Misha and Shizune are having a short conversation. After a bit of deliberation, Misha turns to me. Unfortunately, we can't stay and show you around today, Hichan. We've got to hurry already, since there is a lot of work for us to do. You'll find your way around here, I'm sure of it. Wait, the teacher said I'd have to see the nurse. Where do I have to go? Is that so? We can at least show you that much. Oh, come on, the nurses have their own building, so we have to go outside. We join the flow of students making their way down the stairwell and outside with the girls pointing out other senior classrooms in the same hallway as ours. It, they said that the school was like made specifically to be accommodating for all the students who have like, who go here because they have disabilities. And the closest nurf, nurse's office, you have to leave the like, school in a building separate and go to a building. different part of the grounds <laughs> to get to. Like, how is that accommodating? Yeah. <laughs> when we get outside, the girls make their way to the smaller building right next to the school. Well, at least it's right next door. I guess. And not on the far end of campus. It's built in the same style, so it looks like it's actually a part of the main building. But it's not, because we don't care about your disability. Yeah. 
This is the auxiliary building here. There's a lot of official and important stuff inside, like the Yamaku Foundation office and all the nurses' offices. They even have a swimming pool. How is that official? <laughs> Don't be silly, Hee-chan. It's for physical therapy, of course. Anyway, all the nursing staff facilities are in there too. The head nurse's office is on the first floor. You'll be fine from here, right? We'll be going then. See you tomorrow. Yeah, thanks. Bye. A whole building for stuff that has nothing to do with actual education? Well, yeah. <laughs> it's a nurse's office. <laughs> I guess it's necessary for a place like these, like this. <laughs> wow. Slipping in, slipping in a bit of your own thoughts there, I see. A little bit of a Freudian slip say, there. I was going to say, for these people. Mm -hmm. uh, I walk in, hoping that this really will only be a quick visit, like the teacher said. On a white door on the left is a green cross with the text, Head Nurse, and a nameplate. Almost looks like a church. Hallway. Yeah, that was the vibe I got. A voice from the inside responds to my knock almost immediately, but I can't quite make it out. I think they could have gotten a, a lower quality sound bite for the knock. I didn't even hear it. That's how bad it was. <laughs> it sounded like a bit like an invitation to open the door, so I invite myself further in. The room is not large and it smells strange. A friendly looking man turns around on his office chair to face me as I enter. His desk is neat and tidy, but the bin under the table is overflowing with used medical utensils, and there are at least a dozen coffee cup rings lingering on the desk. Hello there, what can I do for you today? He is young looking and sort of rugged, but the dimples in his cheeks wash that impression away when he smiles. Um, are you the nurse? He smiles like a person who has heard this very same question hundreds of times. My SIM is, has it so on the door, no? You can call me by my name or just the nurse like everyone else. <laughs> of course. I shake off my confusion, realizing I sh probably should grab his extended hand. I'm very curious where this is going with this music. <laughs> his handshake is rather firm and friendly. Uh oh. Right, er, I'm a new student, and my homeroom teacher told me to come and meet you. My name is Hiso Nakai. His eyes light up with revelation, and he snaps his fingers. Oh, you're that, Nikai! I was just reading your file in the morning. What kind of chronic arrhythmia and related congenital heart muscle deficiency, right? He gestures me to sit down in a vacant armchair in front of his desk. Yes. What's, what is with this expression with, like, the one eye closed? Yeah. Good, Will. You've probably been briefed about the school enough, so I'll just go over this quickly. We have all kinds of facilities available, mostly physical therapy and such. There's always someone for my staff around, even at night, so never hesitate to call us if there is a problem. The famous 24-hour nursing staff. Wow, this is like a hospital. Oh, not exactly. For instance, we don't do brain surgery here. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> His joke feels so out of place that I'm left thinking why he even said it. Well, I thought it was funny. Yeah, just that it's really weird to have so many medical people at a school. You'll get used to it. I'm not so sure of that myself, but I don't let the nurse know it. Now let me just find your file again. While he searches for something from his computer and shuffles stacks of paper around, I let my gaze wander around the room. It's, it's almost like cyberpunk music. I was getting more like I game mean cyberpunk show. 2077. Oh, yeah. Oh, game show? It's the epitome of generic, I'd like to say. Beige walls and ceiling, dark gray laminate flooring, and all the equipment you'd expect from a school's nurse's office. 
Even the ridiculous educational posters are hanging on all four walls, reminding me to eat properly three times a day and from all the food groups. Smiling, the nurse draws a thick file from a stack of similarly thick files and opens it. You already have medication for the arrhythmia. Just remember to take your pills every morning and evening or it won't be much help. Apart from that, do you do any sports? Uh, rash stuff? Like, I don't know, boxing? He grins to his own joke, but I don't. Um, well, I played soccer occasionally with some classmates. Alright, I'm afraid I'm gonna have to recommend you refrain from doing that, at least for the time being. Oh. My lack of reaction makes him raise an eyebrow, but really, I'm not too bothered by him forbidding me to kick a ball around. I guess I never did it out of burning passion for the sport, just to have something to do. Any kind of concussion might be very dangerous to your heart, and risking other atta another attack is not a good idea. Was the previous one caused by a sudden concussion to the chest area? There is no mention of the cause in your papers. <laughs> not exactly. I sidestep the question acceptably, and he glances at me over his papers, with a more serious expression on his face. Still, you need to keep your body healthy, so some exercise would do you good. You have physical therapy and such available, as I said, but I don't think you really need such heavy measures. Just get some light exercise regularly. Brisk walks, or even light jogging, jumping rope, that sort of thing. Swimming, maybe? There's a pool here. Ah, oh, yes, the pool. I was told. What was that? I said, oh yes, the pool. <laughs> you were? Very good. At any rate, I'm sure you've been told this before. You just need to take care not to overexert yourself. He wags his finger to emphasize the point. No need, really. I've heard this a thousand times already. Absolutely no unnecessary risks. Take care of yourself. He goes over my papers one more time, and sets them on the desk, obviously content. Good, that's it then. Come meet me if you ever need anything. I'm ushered out before I even realize it. A quick visit indeed. <laughs>